I need to dance or else I just, I'll feel empty. It's just a natural rhythm for me. My dad named me Lili'uokalani after Queen Lili'uokalani, the last reigning monarch of Hawaii. Someone asked me, what did you name me? And I was like, oh, I don't know. I've never asked before. And he's like, go home and go ask your dad why he named you that so you can know. Kipu Ranch uh, was established in 1872. Uh, the ranch was originally owned by Hawaiian royalty. My parents just recently retired and they live right on the ranch. I get to go over and have a cup of coffee with them in the morning. And my dad's actually working on the ranch with me, so he and I are out there blazing through trail. It's pretty neat, you know. I've been here all my life. I'm the oldest of four children. My father, uh, Jose Angel, was well known in the early days of Hawaii surfing. Um, and he was on the cover of the very first surfer magazine. They call me Johnny Aloha because I'm like an ambassador of Aloha. Pretty much had to teach myself about the ocean since my dad was lost in the ocean. I kind of get his energy when I'm out there. I get a lot of positive feedback from all the people I rescue. <laughs> yeah. My brother left on a trip and said, glass these 10 boards and you'll have enough money for rent. So I just kind of fell into it right there slowly been adding to it. I grew up in Michigan. I was a weirdo in high school. I just had this moment where I was like, what am I doing here? <laughs> and I just like, yeah, went home and got a one-way ticket to Hawaii. Since I was a little kid watching Magna P.I., which was my whole family's favorite TV show, my mom and my sister had a crush on Tom Selleck. I had a crush on the helicopter. Just always wanted to fly helicopters and fell in love with this place. And why is addicting? The Aina is the land. It's like our mother. So you watch the Aina, you take care of it, and it takes care of you. The ocean is high. He feeds you, he helps you, but yet, when he gets like this, you know, he's like a warrior. The strength of this wave, the water, you can't believe it, you know? This thing move mountains. <laughs> When I was born, I was given the name Kuupeepe Kawila. means the god of thunder and lightning. I could not have this name until my grandmother, when I was 34 years old, she goes, now you are Kuupeepe Kawila. I go, whoa. In the Hawaiian culture, kids are not ready for it. But 34 years old, I'm ready. You have a problem, you come against me, I'm gonna go back against you too. You're dancing right now, actually. You just don't know it. How do you mean? You're breathing. I want to be a dance teacher. One of the things that I would do with my students is I would tell them to pick a spot in the room and then just have them breathe. And then have them start dancing to the rhythm of their breathing. You can just... And then... And then... It's like having a stranger come into your home. It's like, argh, just like trying to threaten and get you out of there. Because in the past, people came in, took kindness as a form of weakness, and that's how the culture went down, downhill from there. Hawaii, yeah. from like seeing like what it was like presented as like in TV and movies, it's so different than living here all the time. Waikiki is like, it's not Waikiki sucks. what Hawaii is. Yeah. It's just like LA for me. It's like coming up here, it was like, oh, this is what Hawaii is. You know, like you see like signs around that say keep the country country so like you don't have development. It's because they don't want the whole island to turn into Waikiki. Yeah. Hawaii, 
it doesn't matter what you do, what you wear, you're respected the same. You're probably respected less if you're rich than you were if you're a surf bum. Just seeing more of the island has opened my eyes to like the beauty of, of the whole island, really. There's amazing aspects of it. Everything changes and you can't stop it, but it's getting a lot more crowded. It's not the same as it used to be. You know, a lot of Hawaiians in the old days, they always says, you know, I'm so mad with the Americans, you know, they put in farms here, they put in houses and all this stuff. So I raised my hand and said, how did you come from Molokai to Oahu? Did you swim or did you paddle canoe? Oh, you caught an airplane. Then when you got to the airport, did you ride a horse or did you walk? Oh, you rented an American car? <laughs> we are the melting pot of the world here. There was a story that when the missionaries came and overthrew Queen Liliuokalani, she cried and her tears ran like blood. I almost feel like it's offensive for me to have that name. It's Queen Liliuokalani. She tried bringing her people together. I should know what power my name holds. We all take uh, our islands for granted because it's such a beautiful place. But we don't take time to smell the roses. We're all always so busy. Burned the candle at both ends in in the middle. <laughs> also be a beautiful mermaid <laughs> that you're, when you're in the ocean as you're just surrounded by energy and love and it's awesome. Yeah, it's a magical, mystical island. It's the first place I ever saw a rainbow at night. A rainbow at night. That's why they say keep it country. They don't like the four-lane highways going in. Bring too much traffic, too much, uh, too much people, they say. Hawaii kind of has like its own personality. It just brought me out of some dark habits and yeah, I'd say Hawaii is a mother. the breath of life. Being in an island, being in Hawaii, when you feel the breeze come in, it's like a breath of life. Don't keep it inside you. What you feel, let it out.